Hi everyone. So I wanted to do two examples, one with Boyle's Law, one with Charles' Law, so that way you can have practice of reading the examples and then also trying to determine if one would be Boyle's Law or if one would be Charles' Law. So I have one example problem on the board. Um, it says that a sample of oxygen gas occupies a volume of 250 milliliters <clears throat> at 740 millimeters of mercury of pressure. What volume will it occupy at 800 millimeters of mercury? So I am relating volume and pressure. So if I wanted to try to figure out which gas law this would be, I would want to look at which gas law has volume and pressure in it. And that would be Boyle's law. So Boyle's law, we know. Let's change this guy, sorry. Is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So we have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. And I know that I have a volume of 250 milliliters. So let's write 250 milliliters would be my first volume. So that's V1. And then my P1 would be 740 millimeters of mercury. <clears throat> I know that I need to find my second volume because it says what volume will it occupy. So I'm trying to find V2 and I know that my second pressure is 800. So what I would do to get V2 by itself, I'm going to have to multiply these two together first. When I do that, I should get 185,000. And then that's going to leave me with equals V2 times 800 millimeters of mercury. Guys, I'm sorry too, I forgot my units here. So let's add those in. So this unit would be just a milliliter times millimeters of mercury. Um, so now to get V2 by itself, I'm just going to divide both sides by 800. Then I can see here that my millimeters of mercury are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be left with this number divided by this number. And then that should give me my volume equaling 231 milliliters. <clears throat> so this would be my example of a Boyle's Law problem. What I want you to do on every single one of these, I want you to show me your formula. I want you to write out <clears throat> what you have for each variable. I want you to show me your work like this, and I want your units in your work. Um, once you get your answer, will you please circle your answer for me and make sure that your answer has a unit on it. Now let's do <clears throat> the second problem. And the second problem says a sample of nitrogen occupies a volume of 250 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. What volume will it occupy at 95 degrees Celsius? So again, I need to ask, what variables am I relating in this problem? I have volume and I have temperature because I see milliliters, that would be volume. And I see Celsius, that would be temperature. So I'm going to try to figure out which gas law that I know of, we've only learned two so far, Boyle's and Charles, which gas law would this be that relates volume and temperature? And that would be Charles's law. So we know that Charles's law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now, <clears throat> yesterday I said that for Charles's law, the biggest thing is that if I give you degrees Celsius, you're going to have to convert it to what? You're going to have to convert to Kelvin. 
So any degree Celsius that you see, we have to absolutely always convert them to Kelvin. And I'm going to do that by adding 273. So let's just set up what we have. I have a sample of nitrogen occupies a volume of 250, so that should be my V1. So I have 250 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. So I have 25 degrees Celsius, but I need to convert that, because that would be my T1, I need to convert that to Kelvin. So to do that, I'm going to add 273 to 25. When I do that, that should give me 298. So I have 298 Kelvin. And then I'm trying to find what volume it would occupy. So I'm trying to find V2. And I know my second temperature is 95 degrees Celsius. So if I add 95 to 273, because I need it to be Kelvin, that would give me 368. Oh, forgot the eighth there, guys. So I have everything set up. I just need to solve for V2. <coughs> so to do that, we're just going to cross multiply and then divide. So if I did 250 milliliters times 368, that would give me 298. And then that would also be leftover V2 times 298. So to get V2 by itself, I would just divide both sides by 298 Kelvin. And then I can see here that since I want volume, my Kelvins will cancel, so I'm just left with milliliters. So then if I divided that by 298, that's going to give me my volume to be equal to 309. And since I want volume, I was left over with milliliters. That would be my milliliters. Okay, so we did one example with Boyles, one example with Charles. You're going to be given a worksheet today, and that worksheet is going to have one section on Boyles gas law, one section on Charles. You have to show all of this work for all of those problems. And then the last section is going to be a mixed section where you're going to have to tell me if it's Boyles or Charles and then show me all of your work with that as well, okay? Um, you have the entire bell to work on it and it is due before you leave class today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!